All right, we're uh, joined by head coach of the Los Angeles Chargers, Brandon Staley. Coach, thanks for joining us here. Thanks for having me, guys. Um, we have to start this off with, uh, we were contractually obliged to check in on how our former colleague, PFF, Zach Robinson is doing. You guys were interviewing <laughs> him for offensive coordinator. Yeah, well, Z-Rob's one of my favorites. Uh, we had a, a really special year together in 2020, fellow quarterback, um, and so, you know, just... Uh, a huge fan of Z Robs, and um, you know I interviewed him for the offensive coordinator job. He lit it up. Um, he's going to be a fantastic offensive coordinator in this league. I, I think he's going to be a head coach in, in, in short order. And um, you know uh, Sean's lucky to have him uh, back in LA for sure. Obviously, you guys got Kellen Moore now as your OC. What were you looking for in that OC search? What was like the criteria? Because obviously, uh, much was made about Justin Herbert and kind of the average depth of target last year: six point nine yards average depth of target, second lowest in the NFL. What was kind of the criteria when you're starting your search, kind of triaging it? What was basically, what were you looking for in that? Well, the number one thing you're looking for is leadership. You know, you need to be able to lead an offense. You need to be uh, a part of the leadership of your football team, being able to connect to the other two phases. Um, and I really wanted to bring in someone that had a leadership style that could impact an entire side of the football and then, you know, help on the other side of the football too and in the kicking game. And I think Kellen's got that background. Um, I love his background as a former coach's kid, uh, played the position at the highest level at Boise, played in the NFL uh, for two different teams, had a, a really nice playing career, and then transitioned to a coach. And I think he's got the right style um, just from a leadership standpoint that I think w would really fit our football team. And then I think from an offensive standpoint is we really wanted to be able to marriage the run and the pass game. Um, you know, someone that had a proven track record of, of bringing both of those elements to life, especially on early downs. Um, you know, Kellen, you know, my very first game as a defensive coordinator in the NFL was against Kellen and the Cowboys. And um, I think since he, you know, became the coordinator there in Dallas, you've seen the, the production. Um, and I just, I love the way that they've played. They've been one of the most difficult covers for me personally. Um, I think being able to utilize all the people, um, you know, in your skill group and be able to really, you know, tailor the offense for your quarterback, but then for your O-line. I think he does a really good job of that. And then being able to, you know, put the pressure on the defense every snap. And um, I think that that's something he does an, an outstanding job of. And um, again, he's been a great fit for us so far. Were you surprised a guy like that was even available? Uh, very surprised. Uh, it's just I think the level of respect. I just know how good of a coach he is. Uh, we've we've played against them twice, and then uh, we scrimmaged them, you know, in the in the preseason this year, and had spent two days of practice. So I know um, what a fantastic coach he is, and I think being able to team up with him every day now for the last month or so, um, we're very fortunate. There's a, there's a kind of feeling at the moment. Justin Herbert, as talented as any quarterback in the NFL. But between the low average at the target, he's led the league for two years running now in what we call turnover-worthy play percentage, like the lowest turnover-worthy play rate in the NFL. So not just interceptions, but dropped interceptions, that kind of thing. He's as careful with the football as anybody. Um, to what extent do you guys agree internally with this idea that we haven't quite tapped into Justin's full potential? He's incredible, but there's a little bit more to come, and that's what we're searching for when we, we get this new offensive coordinator. Well, he threw for over 5,000 yards in my first season. Um, he threw for 4,700 last year. So um, I think he's uh, been fantastic as a player. Um, I definitely think he's uh, exceeded any expectation that anyone would have had for him except his own. Um, because no one's going to approach uh, his own expectations. But um, I think, you know, what he's been able to do in, in these last two years is give us a chance to win every time we go out. And, um, you know, I think he's really improving as a player every time he goes out. And um, there's been a lot of factors for, um, you know, all those statistics that you mentioned. But um, the one thing about him is he's an outstanding decision maker. And there's nobody that's more accurate in the deep part of the field than Justin. Um, there's nobody more accurate on third down when the pocket's tight. Um, and people are playing man-to-man -man and they're in denied the ball downs than Justin. Um, and he has that unique ability to take care of it when, you know, most people can. And so we're very fortunate that way. Um, what we need to do around him is, you know, make our run game a lot more explosive, which is going to allow him to be even more explosive in the passing game, uh, put more pressure on early downs um, so that we can push it down the field. Um, but explosive plays happen in a lot of different ways. Um, you can hand it to a runner, you can throw a screen, or hey, you can throw it to the top shelf of the coverage. And so he's proven that he can do anything as a player. Um, what we've done our first two years is trying to surround him um, with, a, with a supporting cast, both up front and out wide. We're gonna continue to do that. Um, and Justin's gonna continue to lead this football team every single year with a chance to compete for a championship. We have a guy like Justin Herbert. Do you even bother scouting quarterbacks at that point? Like you watch like,
like Bryce Young tape and you're like, what am yeah. I doing? Like, you got to waste my time. No, no, no. It's not a waste of time. You have to have full command over the league, you know, and so you got to watch all these quarterbacks. You got to spend the time um, because, you know, this league's about comps and you got to know who you're playing against. And um, there's a lot of things like for down the road, you may get these guys down the road. Um, and so, um, you know, quarterbacks in this league, they, they, they come in all different shapes and sizes. They come from all rounds of the draft or undrafted. And I think that's it's incumbent upon you to, to, to have full command over the board. And, um, and it's great to stack these guys, you know, from a scouting perspective uh, and really measure yourself of, you know, um, did you get it right? Did you get it wrong? Where did you miss? Uh, what did you get right about this player? Um, that's all really important, I think, as you move forward as a franchise. We were talking off air about how many guys you, you the Chargers have sent to the Combine. Um, it's this strange world right now where some teams are sort of diminishing it and importance aren't really sending anybody. Some teams are still sending the full complement. What do you guys get out of the Combine this week? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think you, it's a long week. And so what you want to make sure you do is don't lose any rhythm from your actual football standpoint in your own program. Um, if you just come here to like scout players, you're losing an entire week of your program from a football built, you know, t you know, coaching, you know, team building standpoint, free agency. Um, so you got to make sure that you're still able to do that here uh, and then work towards the combine aspect of it, the interviews and then preparing for the draft ultimately. So um, I think, you know, the thing about, you know, the way it is now is you have more access to film than ever. And so all these interviews are taped, all these workouts are taped, you get all the video um, cut up. So. There's that element to like seeing it live. You know, what do you get out of it? I don't know. That's probably person to person, team to team, how they value it. But it's a great chance to get in front of these guys um, and be here with the rest of the NFL. The Combine's more than just about these players. It's about, you know, being with you guys, being with the rest of the league. Everybody's coming together. Um, it's, a, it's a special event. Um, and I think it brings everybody uh, that's important in the league together. And um, it's obviously great for the fans. So the Combine numbers, how much stock do you actually put in the 40? Three cone, like all the measurements that you're going to see versus, say, maybe like the GPS stuff that you see on tape in terms of uh, those. Yeah. Numbers. yeah, I think it's important. You know, the metrics, I think, um, have been established in terms of the, you know, the 40 broad jump vertical, how that applies to maybe position specifics. But I think now you have further metrics with GPS, you know, catapult data um, that, that, that goes back a long ways to like their freshman year in college. So there's just a lot more information to track. Um, that can kind of confirm or deny some of the things that you think about a player. Um, hey, maybe he didn't run a, a, a great 40, but what did his GPS number say at the All-Star game? Um, or what did, it, what did it say in this big game that they played in the playoffs? There's just a lot more metrics that you can utilize um, to make informed decisions, and that's what the Combine's about. It's about um, you know getting more information on players, whether it's medical or physical, um, in terms of the performance. And that's what you're trying to do as an organization, is bring all that data together um, and make the best decision for you and your franchise. How much of your um, team building approach is looking within the division? Because you guys have to deal with Patrick Mahomes two times a year, three times a year if you're you know, going into the playoffs potentially. How much of your focus is we need to figure out how to stop this Chiefs juggernaut and how much of it is let's just do our own thing and when we're as good as we can be, we automatically beat Kansas City. Yeah, you make it about your team. You can't make it about anybody else because everybody's you know team is changing year to year. You can't control their decision making process or how they're trying to build their team. What you're trying to do is is build your team the way that you believe it should be built. Um, because you gotta, it's not just building yourself to beat one team. You gotta beat all of them. Right. And so um, that's really important is that you have a style of play that can beat anybody that you play. Um, you know, there's certainly uh, been the standard here. Um, for a little while now but I mean you know for us it's just going to be about our football team I think that we've done a really good job of that for the first two years and you know now we get another off season to keep it going and uh, I'm really excited about the that this process to get going so last time we talked you said you're pretty involved in the whole scouting process in the drafting process at what point in the off season are you actually flipping on the tape and going and actually evaluating college yeah I think uh, so I, I kind of start with the power of focus I try to go pro guys first you know because yeah. free agency happens before first, yeah. Um, so I try to do that first, uh, paint the league first. I think that's important. Um, and then this is kind of when I start my process with college guys, okay. prepping for the interviews. Um, and this is my first taste of, of the guys. And I kind of have an initial snapshot of them uh, to prepare for the interviews. And then I think after the interviews, you know, you get to meet some of these guys. Um, and then you can get your deep dive. You know, after we get back from Indianapolis is when you start the deep dive that kind of takes you to draft day. Um, and that's always a really fun process. And I think, you know, what happens is, you know, when you make these decisions in free agency or trade, 
that can inform a lot of decisions that you're going to make on draft day. So there's a lot of time between now and draft day, um, and we're going to try and take full advantage of it. Now, you know, a lot of the free agent stuff, the trade talks, all the stuff happens and starts here in Indy. Are you a Starbucks guy? Are you a prime guy? Like, where's your area of business for the week? No, nah, man, I, I, st I get up early and get a workout in. <laughs> and then, uh, I mean, the, the big thing is, is we're here to work. I'm not here to, you know, participate in all the recreational stuff after hours, you know. Uh, so I'm a coffee guy. I always will be. Um, the adrenaline of competition always keeps me up. But coffee does a little extra something for me. Um, but I, I just I, I love plain coffee. That's what I like. Straight I'll, black coffee. Every, every now and then I'll mix it up with a latte to kind of sp <laughs> spice it up a little bit. But, um, you know, the thing that's great about this week is you get to be around a lot of people that make the NFL special. You know, you guys, what you guys are doing for the league. Um, and, and I think, you know, just be involved with guys, you know, at PFF and, and seeing what, what you guys have done for, for coaches, for players, for, for GMs, for fans. Um, this is why you come to the Combine um, for relationships like this. Do you do any yoga while you're out here? Because I know the cat cows on the sideline are a big deal. Yeah, you know, there's a there's a lot of aspects to that workout before the game against Indianapolis that they decided not to show. Um, and they, for some reason, they wanted to, to show the warm up, not me actually running. But um, you know, hey, there's just a former cancer patient trying to get a run in, you know. And now, uh, now I'm a yoga guy. So big yoga guy too. Um, high yoga or normal? Uh, I've, so our staff is kind of committed to this this hot yoga there in Newport. Um, I have not done it yet, but I'm excited to, to try. I've heard it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, heard it's amazing. All the guys swear. You know, it's it's right when like it doesn't matter what shape or size you're are you uh, on your staff. They're like say that it's life changing. It's going to be part of our our staff rhythm here in a, in a couple weeks. So <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to take the deep dive into hot yoga. Wow, I mean that's that's the best breaking news we're going to get out of, <laughs> out of this today. I think, Coach. Thanks so much for uh, for joining us. For thanks for minutes. having me, guys. Yeah.